Oh, uh, no, I think it's okay. This one is okay. Okay, so um, uh, hello. Um, thanks, uh, the organizers, for this uh, great uh, conference and the opportunity to talk here. Um, this work uh, was done uh, in Milan in collaboration with uh, Melissa Gianetti and Roberto Guerra who are sitting here in the audience, uh, and uh, Andrea Vanossi uh, from here at Trieste and Michael Urbeck from Tel Aviv, who should have been here, but uh, they were here, um, at least virtually. Um, so, um, what uh, about uh, friction and velocity? We've heard uh, um, that uh, uh, friction changes with velocity, and, uh, and usually, most of the times, uh, uh, friction tends to decrease with velocity. Um, but in more complicated situations, uh, actually, we've seen uh, also in the previous talk, for example, that, uh, that this might, might not be the case. And so we tried to figure out some model where uh, this, uh, this kind of non-conventional uh, temperature dependence of friction can be explained and uh, put in evidence uh, quite uh, in a transparent way. So uh, just a very quick uh, uh, um, summary of what we expect uh, in, say, standard uh, nano-friction experiments, uh, like within the Tomlinson model. Um, the, the general idea is that uh, uh, the total potential energy contains uh, a corrugation part and uh, a spring part. So this would be the total potential energy. And the uh, say parameters that define this simple model are the lattice spacing of the corrugation, uh, the advancement uh, speed of the support, uh, and then uh, say the corrugation is somehow related to load usually, and um, the temperature will be moderated, for example, with a Langevin thermostat. Mm -hmm. Um, so at, at zero temperature, uh, the situation is quite simple. There is essentially a single parameter, which is the ratio of the uh, amplitude of the corrugation to an effective energy uh, related to the, the spring constant. And when this parameter is bigger than one, basically there is a single minimum. The situation is not uh, like this. The total potential is a single minimum, and the sliding is smooth. Everything is quite boring. And basically, um, friction will be proportional to the velocity just due to the damping term of the Langevin thermostat. Mm. Instead, the situation becomes more interesting when uh, this, uh, this gamma is, um, is uh, uh, greater than, uh, than one, so this uh, uh, corrugation is uh, dominating, and you have uh, um, a number of minima, at least two, and in that case, uh, at zero temperature, you have a stick slip regime. The, the, the slider will just jump from one minimum to the next uh, at uh, well-defined times. And then uh, this uh, will give you a situation where uh, friction has a, a less trivial dependence of speed. Mm, say, the, the, the simplest way to understand it is that friction is essentially independent of speed. Although there are, of course, some, uh, some little details about this, but say mainly friction Friction happens just at the uh, sleep times, and uh, they don't depend much on speed, at, at least until speed is not too big. Mm -hmm. So, um, for example, in, uh, you will get some kind of a friction loop like this. This would be the front Tomlinson model. This would be uh, an actual experiment with an AFM, uh, with a scan on, over graphite. Uh, the Pan Tomlinson model at t equals zero will give you a perfectly periodic uh, sequence of uh, uh, jumps and stick slips. In, uh, in an experiment which is always carried out at finite temperature, these uh, stick slips uh, are not uh, completely regular. They are also affected by noise, and mainly temperature will have the effect of slightly anticipating uh, slips due to thermal uh, jumps across uh, uh, the barriers. This is another example of, uh, of uh, an experiment of this kind, um, also on, graph on graphene and uh, molybdenum disulfide with different number of layers, and you always get this kind of uh, friction loops with stick slip with uh, some noise due to thermal fluctuations. Mm. Um, Okay, so the, what are the different time scales here which uh, play a role? There is a washboard frequency, which is the ratio of the uh, advancing speed to the lattice spacing, um, and it's inverse, which is the time between one, uh, one minimum and the next. Then there is a temperature-related uh, time scale, which is uh, the product of the, some attempt rate time this uh, exponentially uh, scaled um, uh, ratio of the uh, barrier energy, this delta U plus, uh, to the thermal 
quantum. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, of course, these thermal jumps will anticipate forward slips, and the higher the temperature, the higher this jump rate, at the point that uh, even though one might be from this gamma point of view in a stick slip situation, if temperature is large enough, uh, eventually uh, the system just advances essentially smoothly and uh, stick slip disappears when temperature is very large. So say the, the general say, panorama would be somehow summarized in this, uh, uh, in this slide. At zero temperature, there is a high speed regime where sliding is smooth anyway, because uh, the system doesn't have time to stop in its minimum, it just advances quickly. At uh, uh, low speed, there is a stick slip, uh, and uh, the um, friction changes with this uh, sawtooth uh, behavior in time, but its average value is essentially independent of temperature, with a weak dependence of temperature. Um, at final temperature, instead, one can isolate three sliding regimes because on top of this high speed, uh, smooth sliding, uh, um, fast uh, sliding regime, we have friction in this proportion to velocity, there is this thick slip which uh, depends a little bit of temperature slowly due to these uh, thermal excitations, which do depend on temperature because the, uh, the barrier does change with the uh, velocity slightly. Uh, but then at very, very low velocities, at a certain point, uh, one is going so slowly that diffusion takes over and uh, the, the, the contact will just diffuse thermally across and, uh, and uh, this uh, pulling ahead will be just a small perturbation and again, friction will become linear with velocity. Okay, so in, anyway, so the general understanding is that for um, any given speed, one tends to have uh, a friction that decreases when you raise temperature. Mm? So this is what usually one expects, uh, at least when one is sliding over a rigid surface and something with not particular complicated structure. And for this, there is a huge uh, literature of which uh, many of the uh, uh, distinguished audience are the authors. So you, many of you know this thing much better than me. There are a lot of other aspects like logarithmic velocity dependencies, this thermal assisted lubricity, thermal lubricity at low temperature. This is also, also related to, to Jarzinski inequalities. And this kind of uh, this kind of physics is very interesting and very, very well known. However, th this is not always the case. Um, in experiments, sometimes one finds that friction uh, does also increase with velocities. For example, this has been uh, uh, discussed in this uh, uh, set of experiments with different uh, rigid substrates, which has been done in uh, Schirmeisman group and interpreted with modeling by Michael Urbeck in terms of uh, multi asperity contacts. So you see that there is some friction peak at, uh, at a function of temperature. And okay, there are some regions where friction decreases with temperatures, but also ranges where it does increase. And, um, and also talking with uh, uh, Carlos Trumond, uh, I uh, realized that uh, um, also in, in the SFA experiments, uh, one finds situations where friction uh, has some non-trivial dependence on temperature. For example, in this, uh, in this work, uh, um, in this uh, SFA experiment, uh, uh, they used uh, this uh, squalane lubricant, and they put it in between the mica contact surfaces, which are, say, mesoscale in size, and you see that uh, they, they find uh, some stick slip uh, at low velocity. You see this is a micrometer scale stick slip, so it's, it's not atomic uh, at all, it's a micro scale. And uh, increasing velocities, this stick slip amplitude and the frequency uh, get reduced, and, uh, and eventually at large enough velocity, all uh, stick slip disappears and uh, friction decreases and one goes to smooth sliding. Mm. So how does this relate to temperature? Well, you see here we have uh, some critical velocity separating the stick slip at low, at low velocity and the smooth sliding at high velocity. And when they measure this critical velocity as a function, for example, of load at different temperatures, um, you see that there is a clear difference uh, between different temperatures when, and when the temperature is smaller, um, the stick slip regime is pushed down and it extends up when you raise temperature. So you have a consistent increase of friction by increasing temperature, by, by a lot. Mm. Okay, so um, we wanted some model for, for um, somehow um, 
modeling this possibility that friction increases with velocity in certain cases. And so we actually got inspired by some experiments we were got aware of uh, um, based on some Zwitter ionic molecule, um, which have some polar part uh, with a positively and negatively charged uh, residue and some, um, some part which is uh, non-polar, some lo long uh, uh, alkylic chains, uh, which uh, uh, basically uh, help them to self-assemble into vesicles. Mm? So the, the alkylic chains stay away from water and form these vesicles. They are also trapped, for example, inside an uh, SFA uh, setup. And uh, the evidence is that the sliding basically occurs between those polar hands uh, in this region while the vesicles stick to the SFA uh, surfaces. Mm? Okay, uh, so we, we tried to model this. We, we didn't want to model the whole uh, vesicles. We just wanted to focus on this part. Uh, so basically we modeled we model these complicated molecules with just uh, some united atom um, way with just a chain of uh, um, eight, seven residues with uh, six uh, describing this polar part and just this uh, last part, uh, which is just uh, a summary for the whole chain. Uh, for the low uh, non-polar chains, which don't take uh, an essential part uh, in the friction uh, physics. And uh, then we assemble these molecules uh, using some uh, substrate uh, uh, layers, uh, mm, like this. So these are the, 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 say the uh, parameters of these molecules. They have some, uh, uh, some spring constants, some equilibrium spacing. They have some angular um, uh, dependence uh, of, the, of the energy, so the, the, this part wants to stay straight. And this uh, angle here wants to stay um, 111 degrees, so they tend to stay at this uh, uh, tilt uh, uh, geometry, which is similar to, to what uh, this molecule does experimentally. And these are the masses that we use for these residues. Hmm? Um, then the, these molecules interact with each other. By default, they interact with some Morse interaction, which is a soft, soft version of, say, Van der Waals, uh, with a weak uh, attraction. Um, uh, and uh, each residue interacts with all residues of other molecules with this kind of interaction, plus uh, the Coulomb interactions, uh, um, which uh, uh, charged uh, residues have uh, together. To create the layers, we arrange these molecules in an actually ordered lattice. We come from solid state physics, so we know that these vesicles are not ordered, they would be liquid, but they have some average spacing in between the molecules, and so we decided, okay, let's make it simple, let's make a lattice, a triangular lattice of these molecules, and to keep it in place, we plant it into some rigid layers, two rigid layers, this pink and this violet uh, rigid layers. This one is static, and this one uh, can be mo moving, uh, but uh, rigidly, and being pulled uh, by this uh, uh, stage, uh, like in a Brant Tomlinson fashion. Um, the, the molecules interact uh, with this, uh, these rigid layers with more uh, potential, so they get planted there. They, don't, they, just, they can vibrate, but they cannot leave their position. Hmm? Okay, um, they, to, to prevent the, 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 there is some trivial crystalline locking, the two crystals are rotated one with respect to each other. So there is, a, there is a twist angle of 20 degrees. So this one is rotated plus 20 degrees. The other layer, which is not de depicted here for, for clarity, is rotated by minus uh, 10 degrees. So as a result, they, are, they don't interlock easily. Mm -hmm. And so we simulate a supercell of about uh, uh, 100 square nanometers with 206 molecules per layer. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so this is the initial position. After this initial position, all these interactions, these Coulombic and uh, well, the vast interactions and so on, they tend to relax the chains and they tend to form uh, some kind of order layer like this, hmm? because they, they, they are planted regularly and they, they attract each other, so they, uh, the chains uh, get lower down and they get to some quite ordered um, layer positions. Hmm? Um, so the interlayer interactions tend to, uh, those, to be those responsible for friction, and they include, you know, on top of this uh, Van der Waals Moss interaction, also these Coulomb repulsions, because charges are uh, positive and negative charges are in both layers, so there are both kind of interaction playing a role. 
So when we start to pull this, uh, this, molecule, uh, this molecular model through the, uh, the spring, we see that uh, I also color this particle by a different color so that we can see it advance. Um, if we do it at a reasonably low temperature, like 150K, this advances smoothly. You see that there's very little stick slip. It essentially advances smoothly. This is the force trace, and uh, um, we get a very, very small friction due to those layers being quite flat and odd. Mm? Instead, if we redo the same uh, simulation at 300K, um, the situation is quite different. You see that we have a stick slip, and now it's sticking, and at a certain point now it gives away and uh, slips forward, and this is the first trace. The friction is much bigger, and um, you see that increase in temperature, we, we find a situation where we promote uh, stick slip from uh, smooth sliding low friction at the low temperature. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have this reversed um, friction uh, behavior compared to to, to the standard uh, wisdom. So this is summarizing what uh, uh, one finds uh, when simulating all different temperatures. You see that at, uh, you just look at the green curves, you see that at a small uh, temperature, you have this smooth sliding, very small friction. Then as you raise temperature, stick slip starts to take uh, place uh, and the uh, friction increases. Those uh, error bars just uh, represent uh, the, uh, uh, the fluctuations of, uh, of instantaneous friction. When they are small, this is smooth sliding. When they are big, uh, that means that uh, there is stick slip. Mm? So you see stick slip uh, coming up from smooth sliding, increasing friction, increasing temperature. Mm? Uh, you also see here in the sub-distance sub that there is a thermal expansion. Of course, uh, when you raise temperature, chains start to pop up, and so the, the, the two uh, layers get uh, pushed away from each other. And indeed, it's precisely this mechanism of chains uh, fluctuating up and down, which is the reason for this friction increase. Because uh, um, as you can see, at low temperature, these layers remain quite flat. As you increase temperature, um, there are some chains coming uh, down from the upper layer or up from the lower layer. They get intertangled, and this intertanglement is responsible for the stick situation. Mm? Um, so we, we also computed some this hooking, the percentage of those molecules that uh, get entangled from one layer to the next, uh, and indeed uh, there is a clear correlation of the uh, stick uh, slip uh, friction force, which is the green curve, um, with uh, the uh, percentage of molecules that get uh, hooked. Mm. Uh, by the way, uh, we wanted how much this uh, charges that are important, how much it is important to have positive and negatively charged uh, residues on these molecules. So we redid the whole simulations with no charges, which is the red curve here. And you see that there is still some increase of friction with, uh, with temperature, at low, low temperature, but uh, the, the phenomenon is much less, uh, less uh, clear. Uh, there is already stick slip at very low temperature, and the reason is that uh, without the charges, those layers don't order so efficiently. So it charges quite uh, helpful in ordering those layers and keeping them flat uh, at low temperature. And so you always get stick slip, and then eventually the standard thermolubric uh, effect at high temperature. Um, okay, um, then we, we wanted to characterize the superlubric uh, regime, the, the, say the, the, the low friction regime. So we wanted to see, uh, say at 50K, what happens uh, as a function of sliding speed. Indeed, as a function of sliding uh, speed, this uh, superlubric regime has uh, the regular uh, velocity proportional uh, friction that you expect for, uh, for this uh, uh, low friction state. And on the contrary, uh, um, when you go to the stick slip, uh, as a function of velocity, you see there is a, a transition at low velocity to stick slip, exactly like in Dumont's uh, experiments. Um, you see that uh, then the friction does not depend, or depends very weakly on, uh, on sliding velocity, as one expects. Mm -hmm. So uh, clearly, um, in simulations, uh, we cannot uh, explore all possible velocities. In principle, it would be interesting to, to track uh, this uh, critical velocity between stick slip and uh, uh, smooth sliding as a function of temperature, but that's beyond what we can do in uh, simulations because we are limited to velocities of the order of a few meters per second. It's quite hard to go into the uh, micrometers per second as it's, as it's done in experiment. But uh, certainly, we have uh, this, uh, this same phenomenology that that uh, as you lower temperature, this transition gets, uh, to, gets down to lower speeds. Um, 
then uh, I just wanted to, to note that, uh, uh, of course, in our model we do have dissipation, we have a Lange event thermostat, we put uh, a damping rate of one picosecond to the minus one, and uh, indeed we checked that the results don't change much uh, as a function of that uh, parameter. Um, what about load? All the simulations the, that I showed were done all at 10 uh, megapascal load. We tried to investigate other loads uh, typical of the SFA setup, so quite moderate loads. And you see that uh, friction depends quite weakly on load. Perhaps there is even a slightly negative friction coefficient. But anyway, essentially close to zero. Load doesn't affect friction very much. And the, the fact is that uh, when you apply load, you are somehow acting against temperature, you're pushing uh, the chains uh, down, making them flatter, and the result, uh, friction tends to, uh, to be reduced, uh, while, uh, of course, you're also trying to increase corrugation effectively. So the, the two results basically compensate each other. Um, so we, we have charged molecules, and uh, yeah, uh, we, we were thinking perhaps uh, an electric field uh, might uh, affect uh, these, uh, say, the, the dipolar molecules. So if we add a, an electric field, like a transverse electric field like we have here, uh, perhaps uh, this might affect those chains and this can uh, change friction. Indeed, uh, if one puts a uh, rather sizable field of the order of several gigavolt per meter, so volts per nanometer if you prefer, then we, we see that uh, the lower chains, the chains in the lower layer can get uh, popped up, while those in the upper layer get uh, flattened uh, over. And um, as a result, uh, this uh, does affect friction. Some uh, cations come out from the plane, they interact with the anions in the upper layer, and we do see an increase of friction in, uh, for increasing uh, electric field. Um, an increase which is quite more substantial and uh, at zero Kelvin, where one starts from uh, smooth sliding and one activates stick slip, but also at 300K, one sees an increase of friction by a factor about uh, three um, and uh, an enhancement of stick slip, at least for moderate fields. Then when field becomes extremely large, all dipoles basically stand up and at that point, uh, everything becomes uh, somehow more trivial and, tem and temperature does not uh, affect things uh, uh, too much, uh, um, and uh, eventually um, friction decreases because molecules get frozen in the upright position. Okay, I'm basically done. So we, we know that in standard rigid setups, uh, friction tends to decrease with temperature, and we invented a molecule where things can go differently. Um, thermal fluctuation can promote these chains uh, to pop up and intersect more and create some sticking situation and uh, therefore increase uh, friction. Um, so basically one forms uh, thermally fluctuating uh, sticking, uh, uh, sticking configuration which increase the effective corrugation and therefore promote a stick, uh, stick, uh, stick slip against the smooth sliding. Um, in our model, it seems that the charges on the Switzerlandic molecules are important. We, we tested what happens without them and uh, this effect is, gets uh, reduced quite a lot. Um, however, um, we, we are aware of those experiments where uh, squalane was used, which is a, a non-polar molecule, and uh, a similar effect was, was also observed. So perhaps uh, the situation is more general than, than our model, of course. Um, and also, now we are trying to see what uh, an electric field could do, although, of course, uh, the electric fields that we need to put in for any effect to be seen are quite big compared to what uh, is practically possible to, to do in experiments. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. <laughs> there are qu questions, yes. Thank you, Nicola. It was a nice talk. I was wondering about the, the field uh, example that you showed there. You are, you are actually applying a DC field, right? Yeah, DC field. Can you think about putting an AC field to actually try to reduce this hook in between the surfaces when you are uh, sliding? Yeah, well, it's, it's a good, uh, good suggestion. Of course, an AC field will have some frequency and one will tend to try and resonate it to, to some natural frequency of those chains. But yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, I mean, as, uh, in practice, experimentally, it would be hard to make uh, a frequency that goes so high um, that it resonates with the natural frequencies of those chains. Uh, so in practice, one will have a, a 
an essentially DC field which slowly changes in time compared to... to Right, so you, you, may, you mean one could make the field resonant to the washboard frequency, to something like the washboard frequency related to the advancing speed. I mean, I don't want to resonate your molecules. I guess if I got you well, you said you are hooking the two surfaces somehow and you have some uh, friction due to breaking those hooks. So what you want to do is to break those hooks faster than what you do with the lateral translation of your, of your plate. Yeah, yes, yes, it's a good suggestion. We, we, we will try that. Thank you. Can I, can I ask about the hooks? How, how do you define the hooking? At, um, um, it's, it's the molecules are too short to entangle, right? Um, so if you... Yeah, I mean, how, how do we define precisely this, this hooking yeah, yeah, quantity? Well, how do you, when, 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 is, when, is, when is it hooked? When are two molecules... So we, we take uh, the, uh, the plane of uh, the, the average position of the cations of the lower level, the lower level, so we have uh, the chains coming up with the cations with which have a certain average height, and we uh, count how many of the cations of the upper level come below this, uh, this average level of the cations of the lower plane, and we do the same on the other way. So how many of the sub-chains go up beyond, above the average level of the cations of the upper level, of the lower level. solvent there, in particular, I think, about water, but also uh, salty water, because in, then you can maybe form iron bridges or something like that. Um, yeah, in principle, of course, we, we have considered it, because in experiments they do have a, a solvent. We wanted to make a minimal model at the, at the beginning, and so we, we, went, we, do, we did it without any solvent, but certainly the next step is to include a specific solvent and also include, uh, say, salts, as you, as you say, and see what, uh, that, uh, that will, how that will change uh, things. Um, in our, uh, say, modeling without solvent, just to make it somehow quick and, uh, and uh, easier, um, we somehow tune the, the interaction between the residues, uh, so that uh, they take in this interaction range takes into account the possibility that there are molecules in between. So it is bigger than, than atomic interaction. It's like four, uh, nano, uh, 0 0.4 nanometers instead of, say, 0 0.1. More, more questions? Maybe online, there's nothing in the chat, but not. Then I think it's lunchtime. And we'll meet again at 1.20, right? Uh, 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 2.20, sorry, not 1.20, yeah. That would be your 2.20. Okay, so um, thanks a lot to all the speakers of this morning session, and I'll see everyone in the afternoon.